future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Welcome to Live, Love, Thrive, our Women's Empowerment Hour. And today we have two very special guests. Uh, one that's going to be on later in the show is astrologer Rachel Lang. You know, everybody has a gift, and her gift is that she is a spiritual, intuitive, and psychic, and she uses that for the greater good, and we're going to be talking about that. She's now an astrologer, speaker, and has her own radio show here at UBN called Blissen Up, and she's going to share with us how astrology impacts women's empowerment and how it will impact you. So we'll be visiting with her a little bit later. Right now, we're going to meet Carol Dean. Carol is an extraordinary woman who created a very specific niche business in the film industry, and she's going to share that with us, and also started an amazing organization that helps film, independent filmmakers, and those in the media uh, projects today. Um, and she's going to talk about how and why she started From the Heart Productions. Please welcome the founder of From the Heart, Carol Dean. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you? Very good. Good. So, Carol, uh, you had shared with me your fascinating story about how you got started in the film industry in a very specific niche, and I'd like you to share that with the audience. I'd love to. Um, I think it's really important for people, and particularly women, to recognize that when you get something, when you get a hit, that I can do this, that you should move with it, because yeah. that's what happened to me. I, I was on a set one night, and they were loading these big 35 millimeter film magazines, and they kept reloading, and I said, so where are you taking all that film? And what are you doing with those short pieces, those little old short ends? Yeah, and like the it, remnants. The remnants. Yeah. Because they would start with a thousand foot roll and then they would take it back out. They'd only shot a couple of minutes. So it seems that what they were doing was take, sending it back to the camera department and they never wanted to reload any film because it might have uh, been had a light leak. So I said, you know what, I, I think I can sell those little short ends. I was married at the time, and my, my frugal Irish husband said, never. Nobody will buy any, not buy film that doesn't come from Kodak. So take $20 and see what you can do. So it was a challenge. Oh, it was and a challenge, that and you like a challenge. I loved a good <laughs> challenge. So I did it. I sold my first group of short ends to an animator because he only used... 100 feet a day so uh he loved the price the only problem was i didn't own any short ends but i knew where to get them so just so our audience understands okay so this is back when they were only using film, film right and they would have these big reels and they would use a port a part of them to do the movies and then the rest of the remnants would be Tossed. Well, they'd go back to yeah. the camera department yeah. in cans, 30, okay. 300 feet, 400 right. feet long. Yeah. And eventually, the majority of them got sold for silver content. Oh, wow. So they really had no value. Right. So this is what I thought they did. They had value. They had resale value. So and you I, thought there must be a niche of people out there that could use the shorter remnants of film, like animators or independent filmmakers, right. and they could then buy the film, which was very expensive at the time, uh, for pennies on the dollar. Exactly. Ah, And fabulous. Roger Corman was just starting. It was, uh, was the Wild Wild West in the 70s. And uh, so the independent world was just starting, and we – had a major effect on that because we were yeah. able to buy short ends left over from production all over the country and and test them and then resell them back to independent uh, filmmakers and you'd be surprised how many of the top dps today bought our short ends in the beginning they wow. were happy to buy them wow so it became a good little business for me and, and so one of your clients was the famous roger corman who is like the 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 godfather godfather of b b movies really yes. independent right. movies yes but he yeah. started so many people over he there. started so many people he yeah. launched 
so many famous Hollywood careers. And his wife is pretty good, too. His wife is a great director, producer. And so my son worked for both of them in films. I, I was really lucky. I came along at the right time, yeah. right idea, right time. But the most important thing that I wanted to share with the audience is the whole trick is that you have to know you can do it. And right. when people say to you, oh, you can't do that, you have to be strong enough to say, just yes, watch. Yes, can. Yeah. I think I that's can. happening to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> Catherine? Um, well, I think that uh, this is what women's empowerment is about. So your message mm. is great. And it's really for anyone, actually, uh, man or woman, to about listening to your insides. And that's mm -hmm. what you did. Listen to your insides. And that's when, you know, you, you might get an idea that you think is crazy, but but uh, if if you're if you're downloaded that idea, chances are it's probably something you were meant to do, and it's one of your gifts. And That's so, right. it, Put it's your great that you in it. yeah, it's great that you capitalized on that. And I know it turned into this huge business. You had offices in New York, Chicago, New York, and L.A. Yeah, and I got to live Amazing. in all those cities and oh, have a lot of fun traveling. Yeah. We it, it turned into a fifty million dollar a year business. Oh my gosh! So I took that twenty dollar. You go, bill. girl. And uh, ran my sales up right close to $10 million, uh, a year before I sold it. But the reason, I always look back, and I had hired a guy who was head of uh, NBC, uh, vice president of NBC, and he was an advisor to me. And he said, you know, when you get to the $10 million mark, that's when it's really hard to cross over. And, uh, of course, he was a VP at NBC. I had to believe everything he said, but that wasn't true. So you must be careful whose advice you take right. and what you hang on to. Right, especially anyone who says that there's a ceiling or a limit. There's a limit. There, no there is limit no ceiling or limit for yeah. what, any business. Yeah. yeah. And not and not for women. I think men already know that, but we don't, and we right. have to keep telling each other. Right. And you were listening to a man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is a really cool story, and I think you will definitely inspire a lot of our listeners who maybe have that little inkling of an idea that seems like out of the box, but you know, encourage them to go for it. So then you didn't stop there. You are what I call a real 360 karma woman because you. once you were successful, then you thought, well, how can I give back? And that's what you've been doing for over 20 years with From the Heart Productions. And I'd like to talk about, you know, what is From the Heart and why you started it. So let's tell our listeners about that. Okay, well, it's a, a nonprofit that works with filmmakers, and the idea behind it is that our uh, mantra is to nurture and support filmmakers because they have such a lot to do. They mm -hmm. are entrepreneurs. They have to be. They have to know the legal side. They know editing, producing, writing, directing. It's an amazing amount of talent in filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And so the hardest part, actually the easiest part, once they get the knack of it, is raising money. But they have to do that too. So we teach. Uh, we teach the business side, but we also teach how to make an ask, how to go after the money. Uh, we teach them how to do uh, crowdfunding, parties, home parties, uh, house parties for funding, right. and one-on-one -on -one asks. Yeah, let's, let's clarify that. You teach them how to do fundraising at house parties, yes, not just house parties. <laughs> well, it's a fundraising house party. Yeah, yeah. And also... Um, how to go after corporate sponsorship right. and distribution now uh -huh. because self-distribution is the key way to go and we really have a lot of education right. in that area but the most important thing for filmmakers is to have a company that they can rely on and the nonprofit organization like ours enables donors to get a tax write-off right and i've i've done some crowdfunding for our live love thrive webisodes with your company and you fiscally sponsored us so that the donations were tax deductible which was awesome Thank and you. uh i know that you believe in really helping uh projects like ours that are for the greater good yes and um you know, a lot of film projects wouldn't have gotten made if it wasn't for what you're doing to help filmmakers. I wanted to know, do you have any specific success stories of uh, films that you've helped to, to get funded that you want well, to share? Well, I'll start with, I go back and say that I did start a film grant. And uh, that was something that it, I wasn't planning on. So I'll lead up to some, Barbara Leibowitz is one of my favorite stories about winning our film grant. 
Uh, but what happened was that um, my father had given had moved from Texas out to California to help me because his business just exploded on me. And he always worked over the counter because he loved to talk to the filmmakers. And I kept finding these shortages in film stock. And he uh, so finally I confronted him because there were no computers. We all did it by hand. And uh, he said, oh, that 10,000 feet is not missing out of inventory. It's on location. I had to give that filmmaker that raw stock. And I was shocked because I'm the one that's always watching the money and chasing hot checks in Hollywood while he's giving raw stock away. Well, when he died, I put something in variety because people loved him. And would you know that I started getting these phone calls. I wouldn't have graduated from UCLA without your father giving me the stock to make my film. Wow. I needed film, and your father gave it to me. I made a short film. I've got a really good job now, thanks to him. Wow. And I thought, well, he's got it right. So we started a film grant. Oh my gosh, I love it. And what's the name of it? From the Heart Productions. No, no, I mean for the oh, grant. Oh, the film grant, I named it after my father, right. Roy Dean. Roy Dean. But you what have a to, great guy. He was, he yeah. loved the people and they loved him, so we had a lot of fun creating this grant back in 1992, the year he died. Oh, that's we, so kind. Because that's when I really woke up and yeah. said, something big going on. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Mm. And what's uh, Barbara's film? What was that? Well, now, see, we started this film grant, and I had never really been over-the-counter sales like my father wasn't used to being pitched. So Barbara Leibowitz heard about my film grant, and it was mostly in those days raw stock that I gave, maybe $3,000 with the raw stock, 4000 But it was the goods and services because I knew a lot of people in the industry, so I had a stage and lights and cameras and editors and all those people giving discounts right. so she found out I was working at a convention and she caught me in the booth and she started to pitch me and it was so intriguing well anyway an hour and a half went by and I knew her film from start to finish and be from that I, uh, I started having everyone pitch me the best five films pitch in front of a panel of judges and that's how they chose the winner and that was a lot of fun but Barbara was so intent on winning she had a really good job with CBS but as a researcher and she found an idea and it was about uh, the deep water divers mm -hmm. that they had a uh, pl uh, one of the prisons was teaching hardcore criminals how to do deep water diving. And the recidivision level was very low because it was a dangerous business and they loved danger. So Barbara was determined to win the grant, so much so she won the grant and said to me, as she took her prize, open the office at 7 a.m., I'm shooting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> she had her crew there because she she knew it. She saw it. She wanted it. And now it's Leibowitz Hellman and she and her husband shoot three to five uh, docks a year. Oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. It was. That is a success story. And then of course she's Annie Leibowitz's sister. And what you're just saying is, that, oh interesting. And so what, she, uh, what you're saying is that intention is so important. If you, if you want to make a film or do anything, but since we're talking about filmmaking, you know, how do you get that film made? Well, one is you come to someone like From the Heart and let them help you uh, fiscally sponsor it so you can fundraise through Indiegogo or Kickstarter or one of these other crowdfunding sources. Right. Um, and then the others you can apply for the grant. Yes. But uh, the other big part of it, and I know you're doing a class on this, is about setting the intention of creating it. Mm -hmm. and, and people don't realize the power of that. Yes, right? power and attention, exactly. Right. And that's one of the things that we do for filmmakers who work through us is help you goal set, because that's the key. But the, the intentional filmmaking class is a lot of fun. I teach it with Tom Malloy because he's raised almost $30 million for features mm -hmm. and docs. And then, of course, I, I do the doc side. But we together believe that your mind is your greatest asset. There's no doubt about that. So mm -hmm. using your mind to create your film is the key. And so we get into quantum physics. We get into everyday work and how you can create your to-do list, use your mind to help you achieve your goals. 
and move your film from wherever it is now forward. But we do we take five months to do this because to change any thinking or any old stuff you're hanging on to that you're not worthy of it or why you're not collecting money. Or making we, all these excuses. Yes. Yeah. What is re, what is what, holding you getting, back? What, what are the walls? Yeah. yeah. And we like to break those down and move you forward. We've been very successful with that. And this is an online class. It's, we work with you on the telephone, mm -hmm. and we take about eight in a class, not a lot. And mm -hmm. then you have personal consultations with the two of us for your specific film or project to get it moving. From start to finish, getting mm -hmm. it done. Right. Yeah. And uh, they can find out about it at From the Heart Productions. Dot com. Yes. Yes. Under and classes, under education. Great. And then you also have a book, The Art of uh, Funding, right? Film, film funding, funding. Second edition. The right. Art of Film Funding. And they can get that on the site, too. Yes. yes. From the heart productions dot com. And uh, tell me a little bit about the book. I know you're in your second rendition of that. Uh, right. Yeah. What, what's a little bit of the content of that? Well, it starts out uh, to teach you that you can do whatever you want to do. And what, uh, it, I cover the amount of money that's given to the arts every year by charity. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. So a $200,000 film is minuscule in the overall picture. Mm -hmm. So it's like my favorite line in Tootsie, you have to pull back to Cincinnati and take a look at the big picture, how much money there really is out there, and open your mind to receiving what's there. And then I go into everything you, I hope, that you're going to need for filmmaking, how to do a trailer, how to start from zero, create your bank account, your, your business license, all the things you need. I have lawyers that helped me with giving you legal advice in there, uh, fair use, everybody in our industry that's important to filmmakers. Right. So you're kind of a one-stop shop. If someone has a film idea, you kind of come to FromTheHeartProductions.com, and your classes, your book, your whole entity is about how to help you take that from concept to reality. To reality. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How to Bring fund it. Out it of your how mind. to get your crew. How yeah. to do the legal. How to how to just make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I think a lot of people have a film in them and or a film idea, and uh, they're thinking, where do I begin? And so it's kind of from the heart productions is where they can begin. Right. And educate themselves and figure out how to get all the uh, – all, everything they need to, to make it happen. That's quite right. And With, I, within themselves and outside of themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And they should look at the film grant because yeah. we have a great little film grant. We have one more. We get three grants a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 3500 in cash and close to 25000 in goods and services. Mm -hmm. And this grant closes September 30th. So we'd invite you to check it out on the website. And we're looking for films that are unique and mm -hmm. make a contribution to society. We like that. Good. So they're empowering. And an interesting thing you were sharing with me is about 80% of the people that you work with are women. Yes. Yeah. I think it's the name that draws them. Yeah. And I got this name from Sai Baba. He, uh, at his ashram, he told me to go home, start a nonprofit, and I call it From the Heart Productions. Oh, it, where is that? In India? Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You were at an ashram when you got this, like, epiphany. Yes. Yeah. And I said, so what am I going to do? He said, you'll know. Oh, you will wow. know. And the time is right. You will know. And so I did. It must be very fulfilling to be giving back in this capacity where you're helping all these filmmakers and helping these projects be created that otherwise wouldn't. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I bet. And so uh, where now? What's your advice to, what is your advice to someone out there with a, a film project in mind or even a media project? I know you said that you, you do all types of media now, uh, webisodes and uh, even books or events, right? Yes, right. So, um, you are you committed? That's your first thing. Are mm -hmm. you committed? Is this something that you can live with for three to five years? Can you drive the same car? I mean, <laughs> forget your Macy's bill yeah. because you're going to find you have to put every ounce of time you have into making your film. So first, you have to get committed, right? And then you have to look for a project 
that you love. And yeah. you, then you need to write down why you're making this film. Because, right. you, you know, when things get tough, you want to remember why in the same mail did I start making this film? Well, right. you have it. Right. But it's, uh, it's a long-term investment into your future. And this is why I love to work with docs. Because usually they get... They want to empower people by shining a light on a, a some hardcore subject, right? Or they want to tell a story that's so beautiful about a father or a mother in their life that treated them quite well. These are the kind of things we find with our films. I see. Yeah, as a documentary filmmaker, I can appreciate what you're doing. It is a tough road, but a very rewarding one mm -hmm. because it is what helps change society's thoughts about different things. You know, I did my film on I Can't Marry You about gay marriage. Look where we are today. I really attribute that to all the documentaries that were out there educating people about that topic. And I think that with anything that needs to be changed or shifted. Let's say for now, the focus is on women's equality, equal pay. And I think it's the media and films and TV, everything visual that helps educate people. You're right, and um, documentaries are top. Yes. The top way to learn something. And yeah. thank God the whole energy around docs has shifted. Nowadays, it's, oh my gosh, there's a doc on tonight. Yes, yes. The, our culture is embracing them more today, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. It's good for you, Catherine. Well, you know, and it's especially uh, since, uh, you know, the reality shows and all aren't substantive and whatnot. And I think people are just uh, really wanting something substantive that's uh, going to give them a new point of view. That's why the TED Talks are popular and whatnot, uh, because people want to look at things in a different perspective. But it's like, you know, show me, tell me why, you know. And both sides of the story. We both want. sides of the story mm -hmm. is important in a documentary. What documentaries do you have coming up that you are getting behind? A Zapped is one we just funded that I really love. It's about the Wi-Fi and all, some of the current studies showing that it may be bad for your health. Oh, okay. I'm going to tune into that one. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here with us, Carol Dean from From the Heart Productions. I love the work you're doing, and thank you for being on the show. It's my pleasure. Uh, next up, we're going to be coming back with Rachel Lang after a message from our wonderful sponsors. We'll be right back. Needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. The Live, Love, Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together. The Live, Love, Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. And we are back with my special guest, Rachel Lang, who is a world-renowned uh, astrologer. She's traveled around the world. She's just been speaking in Italy and other exotic places. And uh, she's an astrologer, speaker, and also a radio host here at UBN with her own show, Blissen Up. Please welcome Rachel Lang. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. We're excited to have you uh, because I can't wait to hear about how astrology is going to impact women's empowerment, mm -hmm. what's going on in the country, how it's going to affect us personally, and uh, all the cool stuff. But first, I'd like to know, how did you even uh, know that you had this gift of this, you know, spiritual psychic intuition? Mm -hmm. um, what was the path to this? It's, you know, I, I, feel, I think we all have an intuition. and yeah. um, I did and hit 36 in the casino last yeah. week, and I, <laughs> I seem to hit that a lot, so I, I have that intuition for yeah. that. But other than that, uh, yeah, no, but, know, but, but that's a good one. It is. It's a really good one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. 
Um, but, you know, so I, I think I, you know, I grew up having uh, a sense of my spirituality mm -hmm. and, and I was able to sort of um, know things that, that I couldn't logically know. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was about 14 years old, I went to the library and I discovered astrology. I found a book about astrology and, and it made so much sense. Um, when I constructed my chart, I saw how the symbols of these planets informed me of aspects of my personality and certain things about my life and and it helped me to connect a lot of dots and and understand why um, why certain relationships worked for me certain ones didn't why um, certain troubles oh, that's happened. funny they all work for me no <laughs> just kidding you're, that's because you're a Sagittarius Sagittarius no, just joking it's because you have a lot of Sagittarius in your chart <laughs> yes I do we're gonna talk about that aren't we uh-oh yes, yes definitely um, but uh, so what, what was the was like this? Was your family accepting of this gift or how did that work out for you? Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of times people are like a little bit, you know, questioning people that, you know, have intuition and psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, you know, because some people don't think they have it, they kind of question when people do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you get some of this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Definitely. not saying anything we I'm sure isn't. You know, uh, right. publicly known. Right. Well, I yeah. think when everybody think when anyone thinks of a psychic or an astrologer, they think of the sign on the side of the road, you know, with the palm or the the stars, and 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 a lot of people have used their gifts to hurt other people. Yeah. Or to take power away from other people. And um, and so I think it's gotten a bad reputation over mm -hmm. time. But what I like about you is that you only use it for the greater good. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, and, 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 and a lot of people do, and, mm -hmm. and that's what the focus is today on how to use it in a positive way that's empowering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and I know yeah. you're all about that. Absolutely. Um, in fact, that's one of my goals. Like w when I when I set out to do this work um, professionally about ten years ago, um, even though I've been doing it for a lot longer. Um, I, one of my, my, my heart, my mission in doing this work was really to empower other people, to make a difference in people's lives. And, and you think by, uh, giving them information about themselves mm -hmm. helps them with relationships, with money, with, uh, business. And in that way, that's how you're helping them. Yes. Well, yes. I think, I think sometimes yeah. you, you can know yourself. But there are certain features of you that get shadowed or get hidden. Mm -hmm. And so in, in our culture, um, you know, in your show, you, in your previous shows, you've talked a lot about how patriarchal culture or the culture in general, our families, um, those systems kind of suppress some of our talents, some of our some of our light. Some right. Of our and that brightness. kind of happened to you, right? A little bit when, yeah. I mean, when you started to discover this gift. Definitely. Not everybody was embracing, right? Right. You know, because... You know, I think you told me some story about uh, your mom's like, how did you know that? You know, like, you know, because you were psychic and, you know, it was a little bit like, you yes. know, a trust factor. Like, how do you know that? You right. Know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I've, I've, I've struggled with this because my, my my parents have are very, very Christian. Yeah. And um, and they're wonderful. I, lo I have a great, a very close relationship with my parents. But when I told them I was going to be an astrologer. They, um, you know, there were there were there were several months of very strained conversations and almost no communication. Where and do you think that's because of people's misperception about mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I, I think, mean, yeah. if we could do anything on this show, I'd love to break apart that misconception. Yeah. You know, because I know you're a very spiritual person. Oh, very. And, yeah. Very. I mean, one has nothing to do with the other no. somehow. No. In fact, I yeah. have my master's in theology from a Catholic school. I love it. Um, I've, I'm very, I have a very, very deep spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Astrology is not a religion. It's not a belief system. It's a tool. Just like some people use Myers-Briggs or some people use the Enneagram or some people use um, other uh, personality uh, assessment mm -hmm. tools and, 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 um, and, and devices. Astrology is, it, it gives you insight and, and helps you. It's a, it's a symbolic language, essentially. Mm -hmm. The planets are each symbolize aspects of your personality and aspects of your life. And the way you determine this is you get their birth date, location, yes. time. Yes. yes. And so where somebody's uh, born, when and where mm -hmm. has an impact on their astrological 
Yes. Um, the, the, you're asking such great questions. Yeah. So, you know, these are questions I get all the time. Like, how does it work? Why does it work? Well, mm -hmm. essentially, um, an individual is, when an individual is born, they are like, they, there's a cosmic imprint. They are um, one, they represent one moment in the continuation, the continuum of, of the cosmos at, at, at you know, o over time. And so essentially they hold within, the, within their, their personalities, within their lives, within, within themselves, um, essentially the, the vibration, the energy, the frequency of everything that was happening in, at that moment. At that moment. And, and, it, mm. and it's so precise. Mm -hmm. These cycles don't repeat themselves for hundreds of thousands of years. So each person's... is so unique. It, it, their chart is like a, a fingerprint. Wow. Not, you know, you could be born just minutes apart from someone else and still have a, have a very different chart. Right. So now uh, let's bring a chart up so we can sure. take a look at it. And uh, I mean, someone would look at this chart and go, What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, I know I would. Sure. Um, but yet, you're able to look at that chart mm -hmm. and interpret it and tell somebody about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I find that very fascinating, especially because I know from time to time you've shared some things with me and, and they've been so right on. It's just, mm -hmm. it, it, it's really intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. So the the chart the, the chart that I thought we could pull up because some people where what you can do for an individual looking at their chart you can also do for a business an org a company mm -hmm. um, you can do for a rock band I have a lot of musician clients that I work with mm -hmm. um, and you work with Fortune five hundred companies yes, I definitely. know they yeah. want to know like what their financial yeah. future is and Absolutely. and then you give them information that actually impacts their business right right well that that empowers them to make the right choices oh okay and to maximize the the um, good you know the, the right timing mm -hmm. um, there are certain events that you can plan like if you're planning a wedding or if you're planning for a, a fortune 500 company if you're planning um, some kind of a merger or acquisition or mm -hmm. uh, or partnership of some sort there are certain times that are more favorable than oh, others Oh, right and okay. certain and, and and a lot of times um, like sometimes people say Mercury is in retrograde. Yes, it's yes. not a good time to sign a contract right. or whatever. Right. And and most people are like, what? You know, but there's some truth to it uh, as to timing of when you should sign a contract or do a deal or absolutely or approach someone. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with, well, each person. Each planet is a certain a frequency. Again, it's like a, it's like a, it, and they're constantly moving, constantly moving, mm -hmm. and and there are and and each frequency is connected to a spiritual, a more spirit, a kind of higher spiritual goal, lesson, plan, etc. Mm -hmm. And so when you understand what's happening on that sort of um, meta narrative level, mm -hmm. then you can understand how to make use of that energy in your own decision-making processes. So someone uh, can come to you and get a reading to know how to handle a relationship, yes. money, a business decision, uh, all types of things mm -hmm. in life, mm -hmm. and help them take a better path because of knowing about this alignment of mm -hmm. the stars and whatnot. Absolutely. The planets. And it has to do with when they were born, and where mm -hmm. and what time yes and so i know like when you read a chart you know it'll be like well you have this rising or that rising what what does that mean so the great yeah. question so yeah. the rising sign is essentially it's 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 technically I know I have sagittarius, you have rising, sagittarius everything. rising everything you yeah. have you have a lot of sagittarius in your chart right. and, and we'll talk a little bit about that and um, hopefully this is a good thing <laughs> it is well so uh, your rising sign represents how other people see you Okay. And it's a kind of your face in the world, and it's really, um, it it I th I think personally it determines how your personality moves and evolves over time. So you essentially become more of your rising sign, mm. even sometimes than your sun sign or your moon sign. The moon is is technically where the moon is at the time of your birth, and the moon relates to your core needs. Um, who who you are on that pre-verbal, squishy, soft, emotional level mm -hmm. that you can't always put your put your finger on, mm -hmm. and and for you, I'm going to draw your chart out uh -oh. for a moment. Yes, uh -oh. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh -oh. But your moon, so your core needs, the the deepest part of you is in the sign of Gemini. Mm. You have you have to communicate. Mm. 
Like you have to talk, mm-hmm. and you can't. You if someone if some, someone or something See, is I trying to. I never would have thought that. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> like have I find a lot of Gemini moons or Gemini risings or Gemini sun signs have our radio our hosts. Radio hosts, actually, <laughs> really, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's a real there's a real uh, a desire to ha- share thoughts, share mm-hmm. ideas. It's almost like ideas come into you and you can pick them up really fast. Mm-hmm. And and it's almost difficult for you, I would think. I would think that ideas get kind of clogged. You have so many that you want to share. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And then your rising sign is what what's on the eastern horizon at the time of your birth. And that's Sagittarius. And when you have a Sagittarius rising, um, you tend to have a very outgoing sort of personality. Now, we're going to talk about this in relation to your Mercury. Okay. Because Mercury is the communication planet, and your Mercury is in Scorpio, which means you aren't as outgoing as you appear to be. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. On the surface, you've got all that Sagittarius energy. Right. Everyone loves the Sagittarius rising because you can do it all. You are the connector. You are like Santa Claus. Like, (laughs) let me, what can I do for you? How can I help you? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so yeah, so, so, so then, you know, those are the the sun, the moon and the rising are the three main points. Mm -hmm. And then, other planets and aspect and and other planets kind of fall into the chart Mm -hmm. and each one relates to a different aspect of your personality so it's kind of important for everyone to kind of know what their Mm -hmm. chart looks like and what's rising and and how everything plays into every aspect of their life communication or relationships or whatever right interesting now what's going on i know you said you can actually like have the chart for the country what's going on in women's empowerment what's happening in our country Mm -hmm. which is fascinating. So tell mm-hmm. me what do, what can we expect this year? Sure. Well, you know, the this year the the thing the I'm calling this the year of the woman. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it is. And actually, I I would say that that since really since the Venus transit of 2012, um, like women's empowerment has been an emerging theme astrologically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I personally go all the way back to the astro. I, I work a lot with the goddess asteroids um, and, and dwarf planets like Ceres, Juno. Um, I work a lot with Eris, uh, who is the goddess of discord. And, and that, that it's a dwarf planet next to, to Pluto. Mm-hmm. And when you say you work with, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. I think people are like, what does that yeah, mean? So, yeah. so um, I study them and I study oh, where study they them. have, how they have moved and how the, the discovery of the dwarf planets actually happened in the 1800s, late 1700s, early 1800s. So these would be planets that we might not otherwise notice. It's not like Jupiter or Mars, but these are right. like kind of unknown planets. Yes. Okay. And, and any time a new planet is discovered, there's a new energy that's wanting to be uh, in light, that's wanting to enlighten us and wanting to be brought forward. Oh. And the, the goddess asteroids were, were well, they're, they're, they're female, like, you know, female, yeah. they're, they're named for energy. goddesses, female energies. And they were being discovered right around the time of um, when the, the, the conversation about gender equality was beginning to surface, right before the suffrage movement. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Mary Wollstonecraft wrote her piece, and it was, so the, the asteroids, um, are significant in terms of women's empowerment mm. because of how they. So evolved. that was around the 1950s. So um, no, what? actually, that was that was 1940s, even earlier. 19, that was in the very inception. But we started really studying them in the 50s, in the 60s, mm. and and now you we have you know we've we've done all scientists not not we but scientists have, uh, and um, and NASA has has done all of this exploration on Ceres. Really, which is the the archetype of of the the divine. Other, the so nurturer. NASA is studying this. Yes, yes, Fascinating. and discovering that there's that that there's a lot of water um, beneath the surface, like frozen beneath the surface. So you can look at this symbolically, mm-hmm. and see and see that that in terms of women's empowerment, um, mm, we are we're getting more awareness, we're getting more in, insight. And, and these things are becoming more prominent in our collective conversation. And so uh, that uh, original um, chart uh-huh. that we were looking at, yeah. that is of what's going on in the country? Yes, actually. So can you interpret that sure. for us? Absolutely. So this is the United States chart. 
And you'll see that um, the United States chart has a Sagittarius rising. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, oh, we like that. Yes, yeah, we, we, we do like that. And it's a cancer. It's so born. wait, does that mean, so if Sagittarius mm-hmm. is rising in the country and mm-hmm. I'm a Sagittarius rising, what, what's the connection there? It just that's a good thing? Well, it, it, it basically suggests that, um, that in terms of, like, if we were, if we were to, to look at your compatibility with the United States, we would say that, um, that, you, that you are a reflection, that, you know, because it's your right. sun, your Mercury, your, um, your sun, your, your Mars, your Jupiter. A lot of your influences, your rising, are very similar to the United States. So you can look at this in terms of, like, if, we, if, we, if we're interpreting the United States chart, like, if I'm looking at this as, as like, a, a client of mine, I would say that we that the United States had appears to other countries, to other people, to be a benefactor, to be a helper, um, forming strategic partnerships because the sun, mm-hmm. uh, the United States sun, is in the in the seventh house of relationships, um, with a real strong influence on on those on those on you know allies on uh, on those kinds of relationships and a need to kind of help the underdog to come in and help other people. That's represented by the Aquarius moon. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we're known for. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to keep on that path, obviously. Well, you know, when we look at when you look at anybody's chart Mm -hmm. and you see like what is the path to stay on, um, the the nodal axis that I'm I'm getting very technical, I don't want to bore people, but um, the nodal axis is really that 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 path that we that we're drawn to. You like all to. this talk, don't you? You're, I do. you're a yeah, geek, no, aren't you? I am a kind of a, <laughs> kind of a geek. It's uh, the, the, this, my secret's out. <laughs> so, so this ge- this geekle yeah, access yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it doing? Uh, so essentially, you know, the that um, so uh, for the United States chart, for example, the North Node is in the sign of Leo, mm. which is all about self expression and oh. and and um and Boy, that's going on now yes, self-expression definitely yeah. and you know it's good inter- or bad it's interesting because donald yeah. trump's rising sign is in the sign of leo and 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 we saw this you know the the, the negative side of leo is me first mm-hmm. you know i'm going to say what i want to say um I, i'm going to i'm going to enter into dramatics i'm going to give you really melodramatic uh, dramatic um, and the positive sign of it is is loyalty, fierce, fierce loyalty, and um, and the ability to to speak on and behalf someone of can truth. be living in either one, the exactly. positive or the negative. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so we always so want we won't say which one he's in. Okay. <laughs> well, we won't get yeah we won't get we won't, um, we'll get throw that. him under the bus. But um, yeah, so so the you know my my when I look at a chart, I look at where can I restore balance? Where's the opportunity for healing? Mm-hmm. Where are some? Where's the purpose? Where's the life purpose? And how how can we get you to 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 living your purpose in the yeah. fullest, best, most expansive way possible? And so you're saying uh, by having your chart read, you can tap into uh, figuring that out. What's your life's purpose, mm-hmm. and how's the what's the best path to yeah. get there? The easiest path, yeah. I would say, the path of least resistance. Yeah. Right. Well, sometimes the easiest path isn't always the path that facilitates spiritual growth. Okay, sometimes that's true. Sometimes you've got to sometimes go into the hard. fire, right? Yeah. Like you, you know, anytime you go through a Pluto transit or something like that, right? Tough, tough time. Right. You come out on the other side of it a changed right. person. Right. Right. And we've all been through that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody escapes that. Um, so the outlook for this year, though, or like, I guess if somebody's listening, uh, mm-hmm. uh, like, what's August looking like? Like, great uh, question if, if you were born in august which you're yeah uh, well even if you're not born so whether august, you're born in august or not yep. yeah there's still a story right yeah. right what we can expect for august is this is a time where we're all getting in touch with our our inner pouting poutiness like the you know this didn't go right this didn't go wrong or this went wrong i'm disappointed about this we all of that stuff all of that 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 emotion everybody's has to going surface. through that for the most part. For the most part. And but this we is come because out, of Pluto. It's it's actually Saturn, oh, a Saturn, Saturn Neptune. Oh. Um, 
And so this is an opportunity to heal and to set set intentions for for the time moving forward. It's a ah. time of, of real spiritual growth. Right. And but that's what my previous guest Carol was saying mm-hmm. about setting intentions. That's that's really what makes things happen, setting mm-hmm. intentions. Definitely. Yeah. And sometimes you have to go into the disappointment of things that didn't work out in your life or or decisions you wish you had made differently in we order. We have none of those. No. Well, you, no, none. you and I don't, for sure. Uh, but, but, you know, getting going, getting in touch with some of those disappointments, then right. you come out to the other side of it. Yeah, learning from them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was just, I don't call, I say instead of failure, it's called a learning experience. Yes, yes. Yeah, as long as you walk out of it knowing something more than you knew before that you take to the next uh, venture that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. I mean, I find this all very fascinating. Um, if people want to reach you, they can go to Rachel C. Lang. Yes. Dot com. Dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're also, uh, I know, speak in various places. Mm-hmm. And I, I imagine that you love speaking. You, I do. You talk yeah. to different executives and yes. groups. and. Mm-hmm. What kind of groups do you address? Um, I talk to different, uh, like, spiritual meetups. Um, mm-hmm. I talk to any type of group. Um, I, I, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, and musicians, indiv- individuals. Right. What are you doing with musicians? How do you help them? Um, I help them by, I, you can, there's a, a technique called astrocartography, uh-huh. which. Because I had a musician on last week. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I can do is plan musical tours, yeah. making the most of their astrological influences. And also I can, you know, help people time the launch of a of an album or what's happening in pop culture um, astrologically that they can tap into and make the most of and use in their in their writing. Yeah. I mean I've heard that some uh, very influential people really base their decisions. I mean, people I've heard in the White House and yeah. things like that, they, they base it on this kind of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, people realize it's real mm-hmm. and it's important and uh, everybody should really be tapping into it. Because let's face it, we all need uh, a leg up and we all need as much uh, going in our favor. And if this information helps us. Uh, to create whatever it is, our life purpose, our calling, our legacy, uh, then why not tap into that? Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I think you're absolutely right. And it's it's essentially like providing a roadmap. Like you wouldn't get into your go- your car and go on a trip without uh, a GPS or, right. or without a map. Likewise, you know, astrology provides that for you so that when you are making setting an intention, creating a destination for your life, that you have a way to get there. I like that. And so you think uh, this is the year of the woman according to the planets? Are Mm -hmm. they aligning in our women's empowerment favor? Well, you know, I think what's happening is that we're restoring balance. Patriarchy has been uh, the prevalent paradigm for centuries. And that that paradigm started to shift in the 1800s, and it's really it's almost and, and in 2012 with the Venus transit, I really f- think that kind of said, all right, it's time now. It used to be very matriarchal, right, and then it came, became yeah. patriarchal, and now it's kind of moving into a balance, right? into balance, right, right. Well, balance is the best. We need both at the table, I always say. Each one brings something different to the table. We are two different types of human beings, and and yet we're all spiritual beings. And so Mm -hmm. we need both voices at the table, and they should be equal voices. Exactly. Yeah. And those I think it's also important to know that those both both of those voices are within ourselves, too. Right. And so restoring each that, individual. Yeah. And so when we realize that our gender is fluid and it's not finite and fixed, then we can we can bring ourselves into balance individually. And that helps the collective whole and be more uh, open to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rachel. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for tuning in to Live, Love, Thrive this week. Uh, We'll see you next week. And uh, just remember to follow your dreams, listen to your insides, and uh, follow your astrology chart to get there. Have a great week. We'll see you here next Wednesday at noon on UBN Radio. Make it a great week and live, love, and thrive. Hugs and happiness. Have more passion and purpose in your day-to-day? 
Are you yearning to ignite your power within? Now, more than ever, the world needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. The Live Love Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of Downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. The Live Love Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together.